What is Hystrix? Hystrix is um, an open source library. It was originally created by Netflix. Uh, uh, Netflix created a bunch of open source libraries. They form a part of a single um, kind of the ecosystem of solutions for building uh, microservices. Uh, we looked at Eureka in level one, which was which is another uh, Netflix project. And uh, Hystrix is also another Netflix project as well as are a bunch of other technologies in the microservice space. Hystrix implements the circuit breaker pattern so that you don't have to write network programming and thread programming code in your microservices. You kind of get the benefit of using uh, the library and then what you need to do is to just give it the configuration parameters right we talked about a bunch of configuration parameters we said okay what are the parameters that you need to set for a circuit to trip and uh, what are the parameters you need to set for that circuit to get back up again so all those parameters are what you would give to hystrix and hystrix is going to do all the work all right and the best part of all is that it works amazingly well with Spring Boot. So even though Hystrix is a Netflix project, it's been integrated with Spring Boot. And uh, I heard some press about people at Netflix using not Hystrix directly, but the Spring Cloud ecosystem, which kind of bundles their technologies, it bundles their solutions which is, I think, a big win for the Spring community. So people in Netflix who started Hystrix and they started using Hystrix, they're no longer using Hystrix directly. They're using it in the context of Spring Cloud because of how well everything works in Spring Cloud. The bad news, if you will, the supposedly bad news is that if you go to the Hystrix GitHub repo, it says that it's no longer under active development and it is being it's just being maintained right now all right the shock and the horror hystrix the popular uh one of the most popular circuit breaker technologies is not actively being developed all right but nothing to worry it is still the de facto standard one of the reasons why it's out of active development is that the goals of the project have been met they wanted to do something with hystrix and the goals have been met, and that's the reason why it's not under active development. That's not to say that the fault tolerance space of microservices itself has done everything it needs to do and everything is perfect. There are still other uh, technologies that are being evaluated, other patterns that are being evaluated. One of the most prominent patterns these days is adaptive fault tolerance. Right. With everything we've been talking about with Hystrix is basically set the parameters and let Hystrix break the circuit. And somebody asked a question, like, how do you know what the parameters are? Well, you do trial and error, but guess what? The parameters change over time. Whatever you do trial and error, you break your head against the wall, you come up with the magical numbers that work perfectly today. Things can change tomorrow, right? The situation is always fluid. So you want something which is more adaptive, which is more kind of like it learns and adapts with the times. So that's kind of like the trend that people are going towards. But still, Hystrix has its place in the Spring Cloud ecosystem and it's not gonna go away. There is a good chance that if you pick any uh, Spring microservice project in the wild, there's a pretty good chance that it's using Hystrix. So it's, it's here to stay, at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, but still, uh, it is something to remember. It is in maintenance mode right now. It's not under active development. But still, look at all the advantages of Hystrix. Isn't this cool? It works well with Spring Boot, and it does exactly what we need it to do. So that's exactly what we're going to be using. We're going to learn how to use Hystrix in a Spring Boot environment. So we're going to add Hystrix to a Spring Boot microservice.